When we prove the continuity of a power series, we have proved the following proposition. So we called it star, and that was for any epsilon that is positive, there exists some integer natural number, possibly zero, such that for all n that is a natural number and for all x in an interval if uh, n lowercase n is greater than the uppercase n then f of x minus f n of x is less than epsilon okay so of course this is a sequence of functions and this is some function so here at, at that point we have for convenience we have written something like this so this the limit of this function the sequence of function is equal to f of x but this notation is actually not very accurate what this means is that for all x here so for you know this uh, this uh, statement appears here not uh, not outside this. So compare this with the following statement. For all x in the interval, for all epsilon positive, there exists n such that for all natural number n, if n is greater than n, then f of x minus f n of x is less than epsilon. So, what is the difference between this, uh, let's call it double star, what's the difference between this statement and this statement? Usually, f to state this, we write like this, okay, and this is called pointwise convergence, pointwise convergence. convergence of uh, the, s the sequence of functions okay so that means at each point in an interval uh, the sequence of numbers f n of x okay if we fix the value of x then this is just a sequence of numbers and at each point we have a sequence of numbers that converges to a number that is f of x okay to state that, we uh, write like this. However, the first statement is actually different. You know, this part, for all x in the interval, appears inside uh, the statement. Uh, not, not the outermost part, but somewhere inside. So what does this mean? This means that, okay, let's consider the second one first. So since x is given here, outright here, then when we say there exists some natural number n, this n may depend on this x. Okay, So depending on the value of x, this value of n may be different. So actually this n should be considered as a function of x. Okay, Function of x. So depending on the value of x, we may take a different value of n such that this holds. Okay. On the other hand, in the first statement, this x appears inside here. So that means this n does not depend on this value of x. So it doesn't depend. Whatever the value of x is, we can pick just one value of n for which, uh, for if we if we take that value of n, then for any value of x, then this holds. Okay, so this is different from pointwise convergence, but instead this is called uniform convergence. Uniform. Just like we have uh, defined uniform continuity, uh, uh, here we define uniform convergence of, of functions. 
Okay, let's restate. Suppose we have a sequence of functions. Then we say this uh, sequence of functions converges to, uh, uniformly converges to, uniformly converge to f of x if this condition is satisfied. Okay, that is for any positive uh, epsilon, there exists some natural number n such that for all natural number n, uh, lowercase n, and for all x in the given interval, if lowercase n is greater than or equal to the uppercase n, then the difference between f of x and fn of x is less than epsilon. So in that case, we say this uh, sequence converges uniformly to this function. So using this notion of uniform convergence, let us state one theorem without proof. Actually, the proof has been already done as a part of, uh, of a previous theorem, so you should review it. Okay, theorem. So suppose the sequence of functions fn of x on, on interval i uniformly converges to f of x. Uh, f of x is a function on the same interval i. Uh, suppose this and if each of fn of x is continuous on i then f of x is also continuous Let's see an example, uh, or rather a counterexample. Consider the following uh, sequence of functions. So let fn of x be defined by 0 if x is negative or 0, or n times x if x is between 0 and uh, 1 over n, and 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 over n. Okay. And the sequence of this function, these functions, converges to the following function. fx of 0 if x is less than or equal to 0, and 1 if x is greater than 0. Okay, but this is pointwise convergence. Okay, pointwise convergence, not uniform convergence, and you should try to verify that. Uh, by the way, this function looks like this. So let's say this is x, and this is y, and zero. Let's say this is one. Okay, when x when n is 1, uh, it looks like this. So here it's 0. Then between uh, 0 and 1, it will be a straight line like this. And after 1, it is a constant 1. So that is f1 of x. And f2 of x is something like this. Uh, so up to here, it's like this, and it's like this. So that's f2 of x. And uh, f3 of x 
is like this. It's a zero and a straight line and this. And after all, when n goes to infinity, it will be like this. So it's a step function. However, uh, this convergence is pointwise convergence, not uniform convergence. And therefore, although this function is continuous, uh, the limiting function is not continuous, it's discontinuous, right? It's, it's not continuous here. So it's this part, this point is here, but this point is not uh, the function. So it jumps from here to here, 0 to 1. However, this function is always continuous, it's continuous. So n1, f1 is continuous, f2 is continuous, f3 is continuous, and fn is continuous, but uh, the limiting function is not continuous. Okay, here's a theorem involved about uh, integrals of uniformly convergent functional sequence. Let fn of x be a sequence of functions on on some interval uh, which is bounded and also we assume that uh, this sequence uniformly converges to f of x on, on the same interval so this is uh, let's say uniform okay then let a be any point in the interval and define fn of x as the integral of fn and f of x be the integral of f then uh, the sequence of capital Fn uniformly converges to Fn, f of x. So here's this is the theorem. Okay, let's prove this. Okay, and since this interval i is bounded by assumption, let i be a subset of this interval, uh, say alpha and beta. And we are assuming that this sequence of functions, uh, lowercase fn, uh, uniformly converges to f of x. So, so for any epsilon which is positive, there is some natural number such that for all natural numbers and for all uh, x in the interval we have if lowercase n is greater than uppercase n then uh, f of x minus fn of x is less than epsilon over beta minus alpha Now this this part can be any positive real number. So in this case, it's convenient if we set epsilon over beta minus alpha, where beta is here and alpha is here. Okay, and so this is the definition of uniform convergence, right? So uh, for any x in the interval we have uh, capital F of x minus capital Fn of x. So by definition, uh, this is, uh, so these are integrals like this. So we can put, we can uh, put uh, the integrand together. Uh, F of x minus Fn of x. Uh, it's not x, it should be t.
and using uh, so we can put move uh, these modular signs inside the integra integral then we have this inequality now since uh, lowercase f and uniformly uniformly converges to f of n we have this so replace uh, this part with uh, epsilon over beta minus alpha and that is less than or equal to epsilon times x minus a over beta minus alpha and x and a are both inside the interval and the interval between alpha and beta is bigger than that interval so this is uh, so this part is less than one so that is uh, this therefore this uh, we prove that this uh, left hand side is less than any positive real number uh, arbitrarily chosen positive real number uh, if we choose n to be sufficiently big therefore this proves that uh, uh, capital F n of x converges to f of x uniformly on on the interval i and we are done uh, in other words this theorem can be stated in the following way so this one is uh, so what we are doing here is to take the limit but this limit is in the sense of uniform convergence So this is, uh, maybe we should write uniform convergence somewhere. Uniform convergence. But this f of x is uh, the integral of f of x, uh, f of t. But this f of t is again the limit of lowercase fn of t. Okay. Again, this limit is in the sense of uniform convergence. Okay. So, in a sense, uh, okay, and uh, this left hand side is limit of integral of fn of x, uh, ft dt. Okay, so we have this. So what we are seeing here is the uh, this first take integra integral then take the limit that is equal to first take the limit then calculate the integral. So in a sense we can swap the order of integration and limit. And this theorem says it is possible if this sequence of functions uniformly converges to some function okay so this is important okay next is the relation between uh, uniform convergence and differentiation again we consider a sequence of functions and these are c1 functions and on an interval I, and we assume that fn of x converges to f of x on i. Uh, we don't require this to be uniform convergence, but uh, point co pointwise com convergence. However, uh, we also assume that uh, the derivat se a sequence of derivatives f prime fn prime of x 
uh, uniformly converges to function uh, g of x. Uh, so f prime n of x converges to g of x. This is a uniform, assumed to be uniform convergence on i. Okay, and then then uh, this function f of x is of uh, c1 and uh, so that means continuously differentiable and uh, f prime of x is equal to g of x so that is uh, equal to the limit of f n prime so let's prove this theorem uh, by the previous theorem that, uh, that is uh, uniform convergence and in, in integration uh, from uh, from this assumption we have f uh, integral of f prime f n prime is equal to the integral of g Okay, but uh, uh, and and this a is uh, for any a in the interval. So this a, okay. But uh, the left hand side is this is a derivative of f n. So that is. So if we integrate this, we have fn x minus fn of a. But uh, by assumption, this converges pointwise. Uh, f of x minus f of a. But what we have just shown is that uh, this convergence is not just pointwise convergence, but it is actually uniform convergence. So this convergence is uniform. Uh, so this is uniform because uh, from the previous theorem, okay, let's see. So if uh, we have a sequence of functions that uniformly converges to some function, then their integration, their integrals also uh, you know, the sequence of integrals converges uniformly to the integral of the limit. Okay, so therefore, uh, okay, since uh, since this limit is uh, uh, uniform, so the uh, the limit of this integral is. Uh, integral also uh, uniformly converges to some function and that function is this and from the right hand side this is actually equal to uh, this is actually equal to g of uh, oh wait a minute uh, the integral of uh, this g of t so if we equate this we have f x minus f of a is equal to the integral of g and if we differentiate both sides we have uh, f prime of x is equal to g of x so uh, we have this and we are done so we have we have studied power series and uh, uh, we have seen that if we have polynomials uh, like this a k x to the power of k and these 
uh, so we can define a sequence of polynomials and we've seen that this converges uniformly to uh, the power series uh, and right and uh, we have seen that uh, uh, term-wise integration of of this so if we integrate uh, this Fn of t d t, and this converges to the integral of uh, f of x t, and this convergence was uniform. And we have also seen the uh, the termwise differentiation. So if we differentiate this. Have k a n x k minus one, so this converges to the derivative of f of x. And this convergence was uniform convergence. Okay, so for power series and polynomials we have seen uh, these are possible. So uh, the limit of the integral is the integral of the limit and the derivative of the limit of the derivative is the derivative of the limit. Right? And these properties are also we have seen that uh, if these are continuous then the limit is continuous. Right? So these properties are actually uh, generalized to non-polynomial functions, okay? As long as we have uniform convergence, okay? So let's say we have a sequence of functions that uniformly converges to some function, okay? Then if all of these are continuous, then this is continuous, the limit is continuous. And if the if we calculate the integral, then let's see uniform convergence. Then the integral also converges uniformly to the integral of the limit. And also the derivative. Uh, the limit of the derivative uh, so the derivative converges uniformly uh, to the derivative of the limit okay so if these these are continuous then the limit is continuous and the integral converges converges uniformly to the integral of the limit and the derivatives converge, converge to uh, the derivative of the limit. Uh, convergence is all, also uniform. So these properties are actually uh, special cases of uh, these properties.